Hello, welcome back to Revel Point. And I don't know what you guys think about that previous video, the X scan, the highly reflective muffler. But in the comments, I saw you guys want to see something. I scan something dark with Metro X, and also you guys want to see some uh, the longer videos, the full videos instead of the short ones. Well, okay, let's make super long one videos today. So um, before we start scanning, I would like to clarify one thing is if you were a Revel Point user and you have this, this is called Magic Mat. We provide with Pop3 and like Morocco. Don't use that with Metro X. Uh, it's good. It's not like this is bad markers, but these printed markers does not fit very well with Metro X. So if you want to like a, a base with marker dots, what you're going to do, you can make your own marker pad or mar marker Magic Mat like this. Like this is even from a, an old calibration board. Just remember one thing when you're making your own magic pad do make do not make repeated repeated patterns or you know the, the repeated patterns will confuse the, your scanner. Okay, so that's that and So well, let's scan something dark today, but to clarify Dark I would say there is a many types of dark things based on like material and uh, and the surface like we start from the we're going to start from the very basic today the the plain black plastic part like this and also there are something i think this is called the rubber oil seal something like that and it does have uh, the the reflective pattern on the surface and this is pretty reflective i would say so that will increase the difficulty for, for capturing this surface, but I think Metro X can do this just fine. The dark and reflective. Okay, that's uh, plastic. And also, you hear the sound, right? So this is kind of uh, something you put on the, on, the, on the steel, I mean the metal, like the paint, painted black. So this is also kind of uh, reflective. So, but I don't know, I think Metro X will, uh, can do this very well. So since they are pretty small ones, so we're going to only use the, the turntable and also with the help of our beautiful marker blocks. Okay, and these are really handy. Why? Because, for example, you can even make your own mushroom <laughs> with these marker blocks. All right. Okay, that's enough for the fun talks. Let's start from this. Okay, let's start with the easiest, the plain black plastic part. So I uh, think I will need, yeah, it's not very stable. I just need a little glue tag. Just a little bit on the tip. I think we're good to go. And the plan is we scan it twice, scan like this and, and flip it over and we try to merge the two scans to have a complete 3D model. All right. Okay, I think we're good to go. Uh, cross line, no problem. Object type, so to scan something dark, we choose black object. And also you might wanna, what you can do is, you can increase the, the depth exposure to two or, or three, three looks good. Okay, so I wanna stand up a little bit. With a turntable, so my life will be much easier. I don't have to to do the swing like that. I just comply with the with turntable and be good.
some areas we are pretty hard to capture, but don't worry, when we're flipping this over, we can capture that area well, so and we merge it, it won't be a problem. Scanner more horizontal orientation can capture the point cloud a little bit better. Okay, I think 5,000 frames will be will be good for for this scan. some area that you want to you want to do very well and you just pause the the turntable and focus on that area and do that area well like this tip I think I might need some uh, a little more here okay oh, oh stop okay that's scan number one done let's do not uh, let's do not Fuse it and just uh, let's directly start another scan. Okay, we can fuse them, post process them all together. So now let's uh, put it on the other side, and I think I, yeah, I might want to do it on this. Okay, sounds like a plan. Okay, black object and increase the exposure to also do three. Okay, let's get this side down. this marker block but don't worry we have that area scanned well on the other side so we fine okay I think another 5,000 frames will do the job so it's one more turn there 
Now, let's process scan number one and scan number two, and try to fuse them uh, and try to merge them. So I think uh, I think we can both fuse them in. Well, twenty looks fine. I think I start in the in the thirty millimeters. Let's do thirty. This point distance, guys. This point distance here in the fusion is not. It's different than the fusing uh, than the point distance when you're scanning. So, for example, you're scanning in a point distance of 0.30 millimeters. For example, you still can choose a smaller number in the fusion. And well, of course, you can. That number can go bigger in the fusion. Just depends on what you need and the time you want to spend on this. So since this is a not so much detail, but still fine. So we're going to use 0.30 millimeters and see how it goes. That off easily. Okay. okay, let's double check. Okay, it looks fine. Okay, number two. And let's do in the same point distance because we want to merge them well together. So it's better to keep them at the same point distance when fusing. Looking good. Let's cut this part off. Uh, reverse. Check the isolation. Maybe overlap too. Oh, not so much. Oh, did I check isolation on this one? Don't think so. Oh no, I didn't. Okay. Okay. Now merge. Uh, I think I don't need manual alignment. Uh, the feature can can be auto detected. I think. Let's try. Merged pretty well. Okay, and after merge, I think you also want to detect isolation and especially overlapping because you're merging two scans into one. Definitely will be some overlap. Okay, and mesh it. All right, guys, that is our first scan. Oh, here. Look, these are not noise. Okay, look, these are actually. There is something here. Okay, so it's a hundred percent correct. Okay, so it's our first dark object scanning. Okay, now let's. Uh, which one to go? This or or this? Okay, let's do the. The big one here, and as you can see, this is metal plus some reflective painting, black painting over here. So uh, still gonna use the, the the turntable and same same plan. Let's uh, put some. I think three is enough. 
Same plan. Scan number one like this, scan number two. Let's flip it over, okay. And point distance, 40. Fine, black object. And three, and there is also some reflective metal in the middle, but I think the, we don't have to change it to, to metallic shiny, just use black. Okay, maybe you want to increase to four because uh, I see the, the middle area is point cloud generation is not that well. Or maybe because it's deep. So anyway, let's try to capture as much as the, the middle structure as we can. I can see the point cloud generation is slightly slower than the, the previous normal plastic, which means this painting, the reflective painting is definitely affecting our scanning a little bit. But I think Metro X can still handle it, no problem. Just need a little bit more time on it. all green but still want to see if I can capture these areas better Hold on. maybe just a little more spend a little bit more time on the, on the edge so that we have a smooth okay maybe like this way Scan number one, done. And let's flip it over. And I think when I'm getting to some really awkward angles, like, like that is kind of a hard for me to maintain tracking. So let's just add several more marker blocks on the edge. So I think that'll do it. Okay. All right, another new scan. Two, three, four.
see the structure is not really a good scan, but finally we're making it. Okay, 9,000 frames. Oh, wait. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, no, here. Fusion. And since this is not very much detailed, let's use 0.40 millimeters as a fusion point distance. more patience on this one so I think I'll just post uh, process it manually Beside isolation, because isolation will ask you to select the rate, and sometimes you don't know because this part is almost the same as the main part. What you can do, you could use this called Select Connection Tool, and boom, for anything that is not connected, it can be done. Okay, oh, maybe a slightly bigger. Okay, that's it. Okay, that's uh, scan number one, or actually number three, because num number one, number two is this. Okay. Uh, here. And we merge number three and number four. Uh, manual or, oh no, I think feature will do the job. Uh, there is enough area overlapping with each other. Mm -hmm. No 
isolation, overlap, no overlap. Oh wait, oh, wait, wait. I'm doing the wrong one. Uh, not so much. Okay, love it. see some holes here so let's fill this hole well how about that and look this is the this is the the marker dots and if you don't like that uh, number one is you when, when you could choose remove marker points hole and choose the radius when fusing or if like now if it's too late you just you can just use this called smooth brush function you know you can also deal with this uh the unpreferred let's call it marker mark okay well that sounds weird marker mark yeah so that's uh our second scan how do you like that huh Okay, number three, but before that, let me show you. This is the bar marker block. It can be installed to many items. It has a, I think it's a quarter inch or six millimeters it's M6 screw on the end. And when you're scanning something tall, actually I could use th this to scan yeah, maybe I can only use three of them. Yeah, well, I still could. Okay, so anyway, if you scan something tall and you wanna put it on the turntable, this is absolutely something you can use to help you for the tracking. And if it's something really tall, you can look, you can even put like two together. <laughs> like, but I don't have that many, I only have four bar markers on the in my in the case and also if you feel like this is not en not enough look the, these other the other marker blocks can be used the magnetic can attach to it like that okay this is going to be become really handy it's my Kind of my favorite. Okay. Again, black object. Well, actually, you know what? Uh, let's not, don't use this way because this is, this is make, making the scan too easy. And also, there's, there's something I want to show you. The Oh, let's talk about the plan. If, if it was like this, we just simply scan like this and maybe some glue tack. Oh, you can even stand up like that and second scan here and merge them. But let's not do that because I want to show you something. What if... Uh, Think this will do like what if the feature merging fail to do the job it's it's really easy to happen for stuff like this I'll show you why uh, maybe uh, put some more on the on the side Too much? Too many? Uh, it's fine. Okay. All right. So the plan: scan from here and there, and we merge them and see what what can happen. Okay, it's gonna be funny. Uh, think not gonna use 0.40 millimeters. 
30 looks like fine. Okay, cross the line, black object, three. And by the way, one, one side of this object is super reflective. So if you are, if you have some problem scanning, like, like, like one, it's just one face has some reflective or too dark, you can manually change, adjust the exposure when you are reaching, reaching to that area. I'll show you. This is what I'm talking about. This face is pretty reflective. Uh, well, actually, it's fine. It is generating enough point clouds. Okay. Okay, again, somewhere I want to work on better. I just pause the, the turntable and manually scan that area. For me, is this little nozzle, I think, is going to be crucial for us when, when merging the two sides. Exposure, like I, like I mentioned, when you go to some awkward area or super shiny face, you can super dark. You can just increase the, the exposure to one or two level, just to capture better point clouds. Yeah, like right now. Okay, I think that's fine. Uh, it's not doing very great on the on the on the end, but when we're flipping it, it over, we're, we're definitely we're gonna catch much better details on that. Okay, so step two. We, uh, huh. Oh well, whatever, just markers on the, on the side, I think I'll do. Okay, let's create another scan. Wait, oh yeah, correct, okay. Well, actually you don't have to do this, this is way too much trouble. I created for myself. For you simply use this, this bar markers and scan it from that orientation. I do this just because I want to show you something for merging. Okay. Now.
Okay, pause it and spend more time on the nozzle here. that'll do okay we have number five and number six all right and let's do 30 do not remove marker points oh it doesn't matter we don't have marker points anyway on the object side the other And also, guys, if you want to cut something off, like here, if I'm uh, cutting this area off, but actually I'm selecting, I'm penetrating this 3D model. If you want to avoid that, you can do like here, display, click display, and disable this, enable select through. And then you can simply select something without penetrating the whole 3D model. So that's how you, you can do it. So. Well, let's uh, also clean up this area too. Okay, that's fine. Now, uh, wait, isolation, did I check? Okay, overlap. Okay, now let's merge number five and number six. Let's use feature merging alignment and see what's going, what's going to happen. Well, actually it does well this time. Huh, okay, so, which means the, the software is actually smart this time. So sometimes it could, what, what it could happen is, oh, okay, let's, let's mesh it and I'll, I'll show you again. Okay. So that's the scan number three. Hope you like it. So um, here is something I would like to show you. Let me try. If I uh, cut.
cut this part more and maybe that's that is gonna happen okay enable select through we uh, purposely cut cut off more part here Okay, now let's try to merge number three and uh, number five and number four again with feature alignment. See, this is what happening. Okay, let's go back. See, why this is happening is because, look, this object if we don't look at this nozzle, this object is basically symmetrical, left and right side. So, like I like cut, cut off five and six this much, and it will confuse the software. It's like, oh, okay, so which, which, was, which one is left and which one is right? Should I just merge them like this, like here, right? So, so definitely this is something you might could, uh, would face if you were trying to merge something that is pretty symmetrical left and right side and you just scan half and half that could happen to you so how to fix that easy let's go back to merge click that off number five and number six let's use manual alignment okay and we get them pretty aligned with each other and look, it requires you at least, let's do a five. Five is a, a safe number. Okay, so let's use this as a, like here, here is the, the common area. Let's use this as the reference. So number one and number one here, number two, number two here, number three and number three here. Here. So normally we need three points to align each other, but sometimes it's not enough. Let's do more. Okay, not enough. Maybe uh, another number five. And number five. Well, not enough. Number six here. Huh. Okay. Bad move. Okay, let's do it again. Okay, five points in total. And now let's click generate model. So this way is basically, uh, okay, uh, go back. Okay, now number, merge number five is what we just manually merged this object. So this, uh, this option is just basically you manually select at least three. Normally you, sometimes you need four or five to make it less confusing. Uh, with each other and create a new model in a manual merging this way. So just keep that in mind, something pretty symmetrical. You, it's better, uh, well, it's, you can choose to try the feature alignment. It won't, it won't uh, be the end of the world. If it's wrong, just delete that, okay? So that's scan number three. Hope you like it. Okay, guys, now here's something ridiculous. <laughs> Take a look. How about that? See, so super dark and super reflective. Now this is even more reflective than my previous muffler video. 
Okay, so I think this type of uh, is this electrical plated, and the the crazy thing is, it's not ref the reflection does not go to only one direction. It's like splattered to all the directions of the of the light. So I'm not sure Metro X can do this or not. Uh, let's try. So this is the, the the pyramid. I always like to use this type of. Uh, pyramid block to support something especially if something has a screw hole i can I, I like to shove the the point the tip of the the pyramid to the screw hole of uh, some heavy object so and multiple pyramids can support a pretty heavy metal part together for for scanning and also uh, i like to use the magnetic ball marker to stick to the to the side but we need to scan the side so maybe uh, i'll just put it on the on the edge a little bit. I think that'll do. Uh, okay, one more here. One more here. Wait, do I need that many? Well, since it's super reflective, it's, it's better be safe this way. Okay, so now since um, there is no object type called black and shiny object. So when we're facing this super dark, super shiny object, we just pick either one, black or shiny object to deal with this. So since it's more shiny, maybe more shiny than, than dark. So let's just choose metallic shiny object and let's crank up the depth exposure to four. Or I, don't, I think even five. Well, I think four is fine. Let's use four for now. Now, as you can see, the Metro X can still capture the, the surface, but it's significantly slower. So I would say I'm pretty impressive. Metro X can even deal with this type of surface. Maybe we just need more, more time and be more, more patient on, on, on this. Okay, now you see on the side, Metro X uh, is only capturing a small area at a time. That's because the reflection uh, and also the side is curvy. So, which means it, it is, it is the, the, the direction of the, the light reflected only to, only this area can be reflected to Metro X, can be captured by Metro X camera. That's why this is happening. But I think we can still, we still can capture the, the the full contour, 360 degrees of it. Maybe I want to even do increase the, the exposure to five. Yeah, it's definitely helping. Well, it does took me a while to fully scan 
this thing over here and yeah let's let's go check it Ooh, and since this is not really not detailed so let's use 0.5 millimeter distance Okay, so far so good. I mean, this is really too much reflective and, well, I, I'm not gonna show you on the other side, I'll just let you see it, the other side is more or less the same, so we're not gonna do another scan, merge them, just let you show, let you see this ridiculously reflective and dark metal. Still, Metro X passes this impossible challenge. A thumb up for Metro X. Okay, guys, so, uh, in conclusion, so Metro X scan dark object like just normal and plain, uh, normal and plain dark plastic. Metro X have no problem doing that. And about the the metal that is painted dark that and also a bit reflective, Metro X also has no problem. It do do the do the job very well. And of course this. Called, uh, I think oh, I forget the name again. Rubber rubber oil seal that could cause reflectiveness on a, a certain surface, like here. And also, Metro X can finish it very well. And about the electro plate, this super ridiculous surface, Metro X still passed the challenge. But I am figuring out is having some uh, slight, uh, not significantly reducing in the efficiency of scanning it, but it's not uh, not saying that it cannot. It just it depends on what you need. If you want to scan something super dark and reflective, and it's uh, there's a, a lot of areas, you might want to change the way of thinking and use maybe use another approach to scan that. Okay, so that's all for today's video. Hope you guys like it, and leave me a like and comments in the below and let, let me know what you like to see next. Bye-bye.